Hello and welcome to a slightly different episode of Coding Secrets which I'm going to call Coding Blunders. Now, you've all seen the thumbnail so you know what the video is about, but let me start by saying I'm a huge Tesla fan. I've owned four Teslas with another one on order and I've had shares in the company since 2013. However, I recently had my Tesla Model S Plaid delivered. I'm super lucky to be in a position to own such a car and overall it's a huge improvement over the previous model. But what really lets it down is the yoke steering wheel, but not for the reasons you may think. I actually had very little trouble with the shape of the wheel. It does take some getting used to, but in terms of steering the car, it seems fine to me. The issues I have are mainly with the software and the choices around the input hardware on the wheel. It's so frustrating to use, such a lack of tactile response, overall a horrible user interface with which to control the fastest accelerating production car in the world. So let's get in the car and have a look at the problems. So, the wheel incorporates two types of input. The first is a scroll wheel that is similar to the ones used in previous Teslas. You can scroll forward and backward to change settings, you can push left and right to skip music tracks, for instance, and finally you can click it down as an input. The second type of input are touch buttons. These are completely flush with the surface of the wheel and don't move in any way when touched or pushed. So that's the inputs, let's look at how they work and the issues they cause. First, let's take a look at the indicators, or blinkers as our American friends might say. These are two touch buttons on the left side of the wheel. Tapping the button does just one flash. Gently holding flashes it until you let go, but add one more ounce of pressure and it flashes forever until you tap to cancel again. They try to let you know how hard you are pressing by using haptics. One rumble for a gentle press and two rumbles for a harder press. The problem is, once you're driving, you can't feel any of those rumbles as the road vibrations through the steering wheel drown them out. So you're left having absolutely no idea how hard the car thinks you're pressing until you let go and find out. So it's just blind luck which mode you select and I'm forever noticing I've left it flashing or I'm changing lanes and realized I selected just one flash. And then you're focused on the wheel instead of driving and it's all pretty dangerous. But there's some pretty simple coding solutions that would make it all a lot better. Firstly, we can increase the haptic feedback by using the power steering to vibrate the wheel more when you make a selection. The car has an auto part mode and obviously autopilot, so it can move the steering wheel itself. It could rapidly move it fractionally left and right to give you haptic feedback. I'm pretty sure they used to do it when you drifted out of a lane on earlier Teslas, and maybe still do. And then we could just use the haptic feedback to indicate you've pressed hard. So if you tap the button, you can see the indicator flashing and hear it ticking, so you have that feedback already. So you only need the haptic buzz if you press hard. Also, they should definitely have it so if you just tap the button, the indicator flashes three times instead of just once. This is pretty standard on other cars. Alternatively, you could just ignore pressure states and just use the button as an on or off input. So then if you tap the button at all, you could start the indicator. And if you tap it again, it stops. And if instead of tapping, you hold it down, it can just flash until you let go. No pressure sensing required. Right, next, onto the horn. The horn is mainly there for emergency use. You're heading for an accident and you want to alert others to try and avoid it. So in that moment, having a tiny touch button as far away from your hand on the wheel as possible is a really terrible idea. You can see that you have to hold the yoke with your hand in a fixed position. So look at how far away the horn is when you're trying to press it while holding onto the wheel. And even if you take your hand off, it's such a tiny button to aim for, it's very hard to target. Having a button that small isn't a deal breaker, but it absolutely should be within the reach of your thumb without letting go of the wheel, then at least you can learn that move. So the solution would be to swap the horn button with the voice assistant button, but that would mean a hardware change as the wheel has those icons burnt in. And if you are going to change the hardware, just make the center of the wheel the horn. Moving on to the scroll wheels brings a whole new set of issues. Just reaching for a scroll wheel to select autopilot or change cruise speed invariably leads to accidentally triggering the voice assistant or wipers with the edge of your thumb. The number of times I've been driving in the dark and triggered my wipers, which smear my screen, when all I really wanted was autopilot instead is crazy. It certainly doesn't help that the scroll wheels inexplicably aren't illuminated, so you're just prodding around in the darkness and hoping. Fixing this is harder. You could try and code it so you don't react to the wiper or voice assistant for a beat to check if the scroll wheel is being used, but it's not very elegant. Or maybe you buzz the wheel more as you're holding the wiper or voice assistant buttons to let you know you're touching them and after a second respond to the commands if you're still holding them. That way you can readjust your hand if you feel that buzzing when you're reaching for the scroll wheel and accidentally touch the buttons. But assuming you manage to reach the scroll wheels at all to use them, you still have to deal with the hardware issues of the wheels themselves. 
Firstly, you have to click down on them to use functions like cruise control or autopilot, and it's very hard to just push down without also jogging the scroll wheel forward or backwards. Pushing them left or right to skip tracks or whatever also pushes them down, which will mute the track you're listening to. It's so frustrating. Look at me trying to push left or right and listen to the two clicks. The first is skip track and the second is pause. So hard to do one and not the other. Also, the scroll wheels have steps on them so you can jog forward and backward, but sometimes a step does nothing. The movement gets missed. That means if you jog one step to turn up the volume or increase cruise speed, sometimes it doesn't do anything and you have to keep on scrolling. Not great. Fixing the scroll wheels is much harder as it's a hardware problem. Obviously, we have a huge touchscreen, so we can add any controls we like to that. So it is fixable by taking away or duplicating functionality there. But really, they missed a trick with the whole input system for the yoke wheel. They absolutely should have taken their cues from game controllers. They should have made all the buttons physical buttons like on a joypad, and the two scroll wheels should have been analog sticks. This way you can still have all the functionality, but with physical buttons so you know when you are pressing them, as they actually move. And obviously it also means that you could use the yoke as a proper gamepad for playing all the games that Tesla are pushing so hard as a major part of their car's appeal. So what do you think? Did Tesla miss a trick here? Was it the perfect opportunity to have a really good input device both for the controls and playing games? Let me know in the comments and as always please like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.